country. Other people are leaving the country. They have no money to invest in infrastructure. Germany is very backwards. It's not advanced hardly at all through the 1920s. And people are suffering from this. So the Weimar Republic just to have any positive things to help them. The only thing, ironically, that helps them is that when their money became valueless, well, let's pay off this reparations, right? Because it's, the money's not worth anything. Here, here's 55 million in, in Deutschmarks, right? It's like, so ironically, that helped them financially in the world, but it certainly didn't help the average German who has to take a wheelbarrow worth of their Reichsmarks to buy a loaf of bread for his family. So Weimar had, there was no way they were gonna be coming out of this looking good. They, they had a no-win situation and they were basically done. You know, their government was going to fail no matter what. And the Nazis did not win a majority. They did not win a majority, but they had about 27% that voted the Nazi party. In other words, they were outnumbered by everybody else. But Hindenburg, who was the president and had to choose a chancellor to actually run things, they told him, you've got to get somebody in there that's popular and that can actually do something. And they said, get Hitler in there, that'll satisfy them, and that'll be all they'll want. Oops, that was a big mistake. But at the time, it sounded good. So that's the Weimar answer. I'm sorry I didn't answer that very earlier. Any other questions? Yes. Um, after the after United States took uh, Japan, um, did we take their patents as well? Well, Japan didn't have that much, or any okay? Japan didn't have a big industry, and at the time, today we think of Japan as a hugely industrial country that has leading edge technology, phone technology, computer technology. None of that existed before World War I. It did not grow during World War I, and it certainly wasn't in place in World War II. They had a few airplanes that were really, really well designed, they had some great ships, and they had wonderful, dedicated people, but their army was so far. Germany's army is light years ahead of the Japanese army. The Japanese army was basically um, under-trained, had very few heavy weapons, almost the tanks were a joke, and only their airplanes were any benefit. And while they're fighting the Chinese, no problem. But as soon as they started fighting the Americans, we just crushed them, you know? We just simply buried them in art artillery, machine guns, everything you can imagine, napalm, everything. So they would hole up on their islands saying, the Americans don't have the guts to fight this out. We do, we have the spirit of Bushido, and we will be able to overcome them with our spirit. And then we just dropped so much stuff, ordinance on the island that they were done, that was it. So, it, and this is not an exaggeration. Every time we took an island, the scorecard, if you will, usually read something like 12,000 Japanese dead, 20,000 Japanese dead, not wounded, dead, dead, dead. Because if they, they refused to take, they refused to give up as prisoners. It was against their code. So they would kill themselves with their last bullets. And Americans would lose about 1,000 dead, maybe 5,000 wounded. You can see how this is not in their favor and long term, it's just not going to work out. So um, Japan was really handicapped. And the amazing thing is, is that when you study Japanese history and you look at the people that made those decisions to even to go to war, they knew they were going to lose. <laughs> they knew that. They were gambling on the fact the United States would just not tolerate heavy losses. And that why would an American send their sons and husbands and everybody else out in the Pacific to fight for islands they couldn't even pronounce. It made no sense to the Japanese. This is where the cultural difference was something they could not grasp. And they also couldn't get the idea that, you know, when you sneak attack somebody and really get them angry, you should anticipate that they're going to strike back as hard as they can. And they just didn't understand that. Yes, ma'am. Um, to answer his question, um, the war in China with Japan, um, when Japan lost World War II, yes. they had to give up all their medical experiments they did on the Chinese. Yes, yes, you're absolutely correct. Yeah. The, the, they did some hideous medical experiments on people so, because they were trying to find ways to kill people. And yes, we grabbed, we grabbed all that information. Yeah, the United States got it. And then they didn't, Japan didn't have to pay any uh, reparations to other no. countries. No. And that's why they, they became 
we just revised. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and the United States paid for all that. Yes, we did. And we paid for Europe getting rebuilt. One of the things that happened is everything was devastated. Everything. Every German city of any side was like gone. It was just erased. So, and most of the rest of Europe also had lost a lot of their cities. Paris was one of the few that didn't get ground in, but Warsaw, Berlin, all these towns were just devastated. And you're right because we decided after the war that if we let them just sit there, the people were gonna grab whatever crazy lunatic was gonna tell them we need to do something different. We can't exist like this. So we didn't want it to go commie. We didn't want them to go back to the Nazis. So we decided to rebuild everything. Japan was even harder hit because their towns were not made of stone and brick. They were made out of wood and we just firebombed them. We just literally burned them out. Um, so all that made a difference. And yes, I was talking about industrial things that were consumer type products, okay? Mm -hmm. Whereas the death poisons and all those other biological warfare things were obviously weapons to use against people that the military would use. Yeah, Japan also used um, chemical warfare too. So was all that- Against the Chinese, yes. Yeah, was that yeah. Uh, German chemicals? Yeah, they were sharing things. The, the Germans were sharing it with uh, Japan. So, and a lot of these things were not unknown to people. In other words, you could make uh, mustard gas, you could make uh, phosphine, and phosphine. Anyway, it's, there's so many different types of chemicals that you can use to kill people, or at least make them really sick. And that's what they were, they were trying to do that because they didn't have the weapons to fight the Americans head to head. The Americans had more carriers, more airplanes, more artillery, more everything. So the only way they could look at, if we're gonna fight the Americans in the home islands, and they figured they were gonna to have to do that, the only way they could do it was with biological or chemical weapons. Talk a little bit about how Germany under Hitler started to, to rearm against the treaty, right? Oh, absolutely. They were completely against yes. the British. Totally against the British. And why, why the Allies didn't, didn't punish them or try to follow up on that or enforce it? Right? A very famous saying about appeasement, mm -hmm. which is now a really bad word, okay, is that the Europeans who had won World War I wanted to appease the Nazis by giving up a few things and keeping the peace, keeping everything going. So Neville Chamberlain, who was the Prime Minister of England at the time, went to meet. Um, Maybe it was Munich, yes, Munich, I'm sorry. To Munich, he went to Munich to meet with Hitler and basically <laughs> say, 1938, we don't want a war, what do you want? And Hitler said, I want this portion of Czechoslovakia, which he got without having to fight for it. Um, people don't realize that his air marshal, the guy at Tetter, who was like, not Tetter, excuse me, um, Trenchard. Trenchard was the RAF, Royal Air Force man, who said to Neville Chamberlain, do not start a war because we don't have a modern air force. Great Britain did not modernize. There were no Spitfires. Hurricanes were just coming in and they were fabric airplanes. And he said, you go to war right now and we're done. I cannot stop them from destroying London. Keep in mind that during the in-between period between World War I and World War II, there was a civil war in Spain and the Russians sent troops they sent weapons, Germany sent things, and you may have heard of Guernica, which is a very, very famous Picasso painting. Guernica was just a city, a, a, it wasn't even a military target, and the Germans basically firebombed it, killed thousands of people. It was a huge shock. <laughs> even in World War I, they never had anything that devastating. And so people got really scared, rightfully so, that airplanes were going to be able to devastate cities. They'd be just wiped out. And everyone was wondering, how are we going to stop this? And all the experts, Billy Mitchell and all the other ones who were saying air, for, air power is going to win the war in the future, they said the bomber will always get through. We have no way to stop it. So when they told Chamberlain, if you have a war, if you don't make a peace, we're going to have a devastated England. So when Chamberlain said, yeah, you want that piece of Czechoslovakia? Sure, whatever. You know? And he went back and waved that piece of paper and said, it's peace in our time which was the thing he was gonna be you know, castigated for forever for making a deal with the Nazis. Thank you so much for listening, appreciate it. Thank you everyone, and please, there's a, um, a survey at the back. Um, please, we, we need your responses and how you feel about it. And don't forget that on October 30th, uh, Sunday at, at 2.30 to 4 p.m., 
uh, we're having Dana back. Uh, the topic is Knights of the Sky, the first fighter planes. Okay. And I also want to thank um, uh, Geeks World Tour 2020 and various friends like uh, Catholic Worker Hospitality, uh, Covenant House, uh, Dundracon, Facebook, uh, Game Castle, Gator Games, uh, Lombardi Studios. Uh, also, uh, National Alliance uh, on a Mental Illness, San Mateo. Our Turn, Women in Gaming, Pazio. Project um, Red Dwarf. Um, also, uh, San Francisco LGBT Center, Samaritan House. Um, the United Nations Association of the United States of America, um, uh, San Francisco chapter. Uh, Zach's Auto Collision, and many others on our website. So please check it out, okay? All right, thank you.